Ms. Thomas, in the past, actors and actresses have not notably been political, but that is changing today. And you hope you're on your way to the Democratic Convention. Yeah. Uh, what is your feeling about the new interest in politics in Hollywood? Well, I think it's a very healthy sign because the idea that being an actor or an actress means you give up your right as a citizen to speak out and to fight for issues that you think will better your country certainly is an archaic uh, belief. So I'm, uh, I'm glad that uh, more actors and actresses are because we can, we can certainly get the spotlight and, and, uh, and turn the spotlight over to the issue or to a candidate that we feel could help our country. I'm doing that for Senator McGovern now, and I uh, campaigned in 1968 for Bobby Kennedy, and I feel that that's very important to my life as a human being, uh, my claim as a human being and as a woman. As a woman, do you see that the abortion law and uh, women's rights will become a major campaign issue among women? Yes, most definitely. And one of the things that women have to realize that today we gathered here to speak out about the, the body issues, the fact that a woman should be able to make her own decision in terms of her body. Um, but one of the things we must remember is that, that the way we can do that is through the right that we won many years ago, the right to vote. And women have to get out and fight and vote. And that's the way laws are changed, and that is the way uh, issues are spotlighted. Ms. Greitzer, what presidential candidates are acceptable to the women's movement, and specifically in terms of their stands on abortion? Candidates are, in, as I said, in alphabetical order, Congresswoman Chisholm, and I had included Mayor Lindsay, who is no longer a candidate, but did speak out on the issues very clearly, uh, Senator McGovern and Senator McCarthy. And what candidates are not acceptable? President Nixon, to begin with, uh, Senators Muskie, Humphrey, and Kennedy, who is an un unannounced candidate. Uh, it's been... <laughs> and Jackson. I yeah, I don't. I well, I don't. They haven't stated their views, so far as I know. But I assume that since they haven't come out in favor of uh, abortion repeal, that they are opposed to it. <laughs> well, what are the major planks in the platform that uh, would support a woman's position? I feel that it's essential that, uh, regardless of what else anybody says about women's rights, and I know they're all going to make platitudinous remarks about being in favor of women's rights this year, I think the basic right is the basic civil liberty that a woman should have control of her own body, which means she should not be forced to bear a child against her will, and she should not be forced to be sterilized against her will, and she should have free access to family planning and contraceptive information. Mr. Dan, uh, what is your feeling about uh, the upcoming elections? Could you support a man who did not take a strong stand on women's civil rights? No, I could not. Uh, uh, I, uh, I myself uh, am running as a candidate to delegate for the Democratic Convention, pledged to Shirley Chisholm, because I think this candidacy is, is of all the candidacies, the one that, that is, is, means it about women and, in fact, about the human priorities generally. But I, I think this time when all the candidates are suddenly discovering the 53% of the vote that's women out there and realize that we're organizing politically, they're all learning to make nice statements. But there are certain, there's a real political litmus paper as far as women is concerned. And I think that in Wisconsin, that I'll bet you that the, that the majority of those who therefore did not vote for this kind of Mickey, Mickey Mouse candidate and did not vote in such surprisingly large numbers for, for, for uh, um, uh, Muskie and Humphrey, the supposed front runners, those, a lot of those were women. And I mean, they, like me, are, are not going to support a candidate that continues to ignore or insult or, you know, not stand up for the interests of women unequivocally and not just with rhetoric. And I think that after Wisconsin, any political candidate, you know, that doesn't understand that me, women mean new business and we may, that women may be the most important thing that to emerge as a political force in 72, uh, he's, he's, he's a, going to be a political Neanderthal, he's going to be a political dinosaur and he's going to die out. You know, from from overbossism and hardening of the political muscles or whatever. 